Dr. Ben Dickman. Prioritize protein for yourself and your kids. Myself, personally, I'm somewhere in about 30% of my calories come from protein, typically maybe 40 on some days, you know, depending yep. if I've got ribeyes versus some other type of steak. And, and I think that seems to be a nice spot. I actually agree wholeheartedly. That kind of macro range um, that you outlined is one I agree with completely, where I think, to me, ideally, protein is going to be somewhere, but again, I hate giving it a, a caloric value because I think that's just silly, but it should be anywhere from that 30 to 40% range. Uh, and interestingly, if fat is largely taking up the rest of that, so it's either 70, 30 or 60, 40, that's roughly in the range of a one to one by mass, you know, slight, maybe slightly a little more protein to fat um, by mass. And that's what we see in an egg. An egg is roughly one to one by mass. And I joke that it's sort of God's perfectly packaged food. Not that someone has to eat, eat eat uh, an egg, of course. But I, I do think in nature, we still see this kind of one-to-one -one ratio of fat to meat by mass kind of coming out um, very frequently in these very nutritious sources of, of protein. I, I consider my role as father and husband, of course, to be the absolute most important thing I'll ever do in my life. I am exquisitely mindful of what we're feeding them. And really, to me, it is I do prioritize protein. I want them to eat protein. And I know there's going to be some good fat that comes with it. I don't prioritize the fat. I prioritize the protein in part because doing so helps us focus on real food because it, that is what's so deficient in artificial foods. You've always stripped out the protein. You've kept fats, you've kept, you've added carbs, um, but you've, you've deprived it of the protein. And so focusing on protein for my kids is absolutely a priority. And that's why whenever I do any like breakfasts, when I make breakfast, which I do every morning, literally every morning for the kids, um, it's always really heavy with eggs. Um, it's, I've just found, not, not that I don't give them carbs. Um, I, even this morning, it was, it was pancakes, even with syrup on it. I didn't eat it. Um, but these are my little growing kids and I don't care if they have some flour, but I want them, I make it so that each little pancake they eat has one to two eggs in it. And every, and I'm lathering the butter and I'm just thinking, good, they're getting some eggs um, they're getting good protein, um, but they don't get that at their school lunch. Um, Sean, I think, uh, I know you and I, despite having never talked politics, agree uh, I, probably on all of it. Um, I think that the more we, I think, to my knowledge, the, the U.S. government in the 1970s, I think that was the first time in the history of the world that a government told its people what to eat. And there may be an exception. I'm not a historian um, at all. Um, and, I, and look at how well that worked. In these charts, we can see that in the 1970s, when the government nutritional guidelines were implemented, obesity began to rise, not only in the United States, but eventually across the developed world. Dr. Sean Baker, who is the host, says, I am in the range of 30 to 40% of my calories coming from protein. That macronutrient range is one I agree with, says Dr. Bickman. Protein should be in the 30 to 40% of calories range. If fat is taking up the rest of that, that is roughly the ratio of a one to one by mass. That is what we see in eggs. In nature, we see in very nutritious sources of protein, this one-to-one -one mass ratio of protein to fat. I am mindful what we feed our kids. We prioritize protein. It helps us focus on real foods. Protein is so deficient in artificial foods. In artificial foods, they have stripped out the protein and added in carbs. Breakfast for our kids? Ensure eggs are always included. For example, this morning I made pancakes. Each pancake had one to two eggs, and they were lathered with butter. Dr. Bickman concludes with, in the 1970s, the first time in world history that the government told its people what to eat.